Hey everybody, it's Pete here from FigLife.com and today I'm here at a local church in Fairfax County, Virginia and I'm just going to talk a little bit about how you can grow fig trees with the minimal amount of maintenance um, or at least my thoughts on that. So, um, you know, this is not the method by which I, I grow fig trees. You know, I tend to put a lot of work in the fig trees and also I mostly grow in pots but um, here at this church I think that they're going to want to be, uh, they're, they're not going to be putting nearly as much effort into growing these trees as I would. So I just wanted to provide some tips for those folks who are growing fig trees um, and, and not wanting to put in a lot of effort, how you go about doing that. So the, uh, the bottom line is basically uh, that, you know, first of all, you'd want to put them in the ground because in ground trees generally are going to be a lot less maintenance than potted trees. And then if there's just one thing that you could do to make sure you get good fruit uh, for the in-ground trees is probably just uh, apply some control release fertilizer in the spring. So around this time frame, it's, uh, it's mid-April right now. And uh, that should set you up for a pretty good season um, where hopefully you'll be able to get some good fruit. Um, but just to talk in a little more detail about that. Uh, so, you know, there's a couple things you wanna look at uh, that are going to set you up to have uh, a, a good season of growing fruit or, or many good seasons of growing fruit with the fig trees and and those those happen before really before you even plant the fig trees and that's selecting a good variety number one and then number two is uh, planting that variety in a good location and um, and so and by a good location I don't mean like Virginia versus California obviously you know California is going to be a little bit easier to grow figs but uh, but I mean, like, if you have a if you have a piece of property in Virginia, or you have a, a house in Virginia, or you know, Mid Atlantic, or whatever, um, you know, selecting a site that is going to be good on that property. So um, first, with the the variety, uh, that's going to be really important. So one of the things that you're going to want to consider when you're selecting a variety, a fig variety, is the uh, you know whether it's a, an early variety, a mid season variety, or a late variety, and for uh, especially for in-ground trees uh, that's going to be really important because it's, it's much more difficult to control um, the ripening of an in-ground tree like for a potted tree you can put it in a greenhouse so you can kind of manipulate how long the season is but for an in-ground tree it's 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 you know it's quite a bit more difficult to do that so um, so you want to select trees or varieties that are going to be early and the advantage to that is that you're going to be able to ripen a lot more fruit before the season ends and here in virginia you know it's not a it's not a extremely long season um yeah i wouldn't say it's it's not like the pacific northwest which has a really short season but but still you want to try to select some early varieties to make sure you get that fruit to ripen and the other advantage of selecting an early variety is that uh you know the winters here um, in this area can get kind of cold sometimes and so you could potentially experience some dieback in the winter. And the advantage of an early variety is it's gonna allow uh, that tree, when it experiences that dieback, to grow new vegeta vegetative growth, and then also grow figs on that growth and ripen that, that fruit, um, you know, even if it has experienced diebacks. You know, some people talk about, some people talk about hardy yeah. varieties, and you know, I'm not actually even convinced, and I, and I could be wrong, but, I'm just, I'm not even convinced that there is like a big difference in varieties in terms of how cold a fig variety can, t you know, how, how cold of a temperature a fig variety can tolerate. I think the real key with hardiness is if it experiences dieback, can that variety regrow uh, that, that vegetative growth and then also produce fruit in a single season. So I think that's the key thing to consider. And so when you're considering that, uh, you know, the key is, selecting a variety that is early um, as opposed to late or, or really even mid-season you know if early varieties are really going to be best um, so selecting an early variety uh, that, that, that's key the other thing in variety selection is selecting a variety that's going to be good in humidity good in in the rainy weather that we have and then also good against bugs those kind of go hand in hand because uh, you know a variety that splits in the weather is then going to attract a lot of bugs but there are some varieties that you would think would attract bugs but but don't really attract that many bugs um, for whatever reason um, but so those kind of two things uh, usually going hand in hand uh, good against the weather good against like splitting in the rain for example and then also 
um, not attracting a lot of bugs like SWD or you know other kind of other kind of flies or whatever. Um, so so those are important things to think about in terms of variety selection. So that's that's selecting the right variety, which is going to be very important. Um, but then the other thing is uh, selecting the right location. So you want to give the tree as much sun and as much heat as you can. And um, typically that means that if it's going to be against a wall like this, uh, that the wall is, is uh, facing to the south, so that you get the southern exposure, you're going to get more sun and more heat that way. And um, another thing to think about, like with, with this location, I think hopefully it'll be pretty good because it's in kind of a, kind of a corner here that faces to the south. And this corner should, uh, first you got the brick here, so that should radiate some heat which should add you know, a, a, a little bit of additional heat to this area. And then also it's, it's a corner, so it's gonna be a little bit protected from the cold winds and stuff when those come through in the winter time. Um, so this kind of, this area here should be uh, an area where the microclimate here in this particular area where I'm standing, where the fig trees are, should hopefully be a little bit better than, you know, out in the open or certainly under like a, a shade, you know, a, a tree that where it would be shaded. So um, location is the other key thing to consider. Uh, so being outside, being in the ground, it's gonna get rain, you know, so water's not gonna be a problem. Um, it's gonna get sun and heat if it's in, you know, if it's out, out in a good location. So the other key thing is just nutrients. And that's where I, where I was talking at the very beginning of this video, where if I was just gonna do one thing, uh, you know, to just, just do the minimum amount to try to have a good season, it would probably be to add like a control release fertilizer in the spring. So um, I typically use Osmocote Plus and that's supposed to last about six months. Um, I don't know that it does necessarily last quite that long. And, and in fact, I usually actually do two applications of that fertilizer, usually one in early spring and then one um, kind of in the late spring, uh, right towards the beginning of, of summer. But, but you probably don't need to do that. You could probably just do one application. But um, but Osmocote Plus or some other control release fertilizer like that, just apply it once in the spring. Uh, you can use the application instructions on the back of the package uh, to, to apply it. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, but that's gonna set you up where then you're gonna have uh, the nutrients that it needs. Um, you, you, know, you make sure you have that. You got the sun, you got the heat, you got the rain. So you really you should have everything you need. Um, and then if you have a good variety, you know, you should have everything you need to really have a successful season with with really very little maintenance at all. Um, so that would be my recommendation for those folks that are um, that are trying to just do the, you know, just, just enjoy the fruit and not have to put in a lot of work into growing the fig tree. So let's just, uh, so I'll just talk a little bit about the varieties that they have here uh, at this church. Um, I'll come over here. Uh, so the first one here uh, that's planted is uh, called Campaniere. So Campaniere is a French variety. It's part of the collection, uh, Fig du Monde collection, which is uh, run by Thierry Desmarquet of France. And uh, what he does is he, or in his collection, he's tried to gather together a lot of the best figs that, that, that have been discovered or that he's discovered from around the world and put them all in a single collection. And this is part of that collection. Um, so he's from France, but this is actually a, a fig that was found in France. and. Um, and, you know, I, you know, I'll just take a, a, a uh, let's pause for a second to say that, you know, I think I think one thing that's enjoyable for me is understanding uh, where the fig varieties that I, I grow came from. You know, it, it's not it's great to get good fruit, and um, if you're growing it in an unknown fig tree that was planted by someone at your property when you showed up, I mean that's great. But but if I can also understand the history of a fig tree, uh, you know, where it came from, uh, maybe. You know who who grew it originally you know that sort of thing to me that's part of the fun part about growing the fig tree so so anyway that's why i like to explain uh, where the fig trees are from and stuff like that uh, so this campanieri this is a, a pretty early variety um it uh and i will say it's not the most bug resistant or pest resistant it does occasionally split a little bit in the weather but one thing that i really like about campanieri is the taste um, it has a really nice flavor. Um, it's sweet and has almost like a tropical sort of flavor to it. So this is one that I like a lot. And, um, and again, it is pretty early. So I think this will do pretty well here in the ground. I have not grown it in the ground um, myself, 
um, but I have grown it in a pot and, and I think it will probably do pretty well here in the ground. So uh, we'll go on to this next one here. Uh, this is Red Lebanese Bacab Valley and it's starting to, to bud out and show some green growth here, so that's nice. Um, so this, as the name implies, is a, a fig from Lebanon. Uh, there's a valley there called Bacab Valley. I did look it up on a map once. Um, so uh, this, is, this is where that fig's from. Um, I don't know how it came to the United States, but uh, it's here and um, it's actually a pretty popular fig now. There's been a lot of reports from around the U.S. that this fig variety grows really well and produces really good fruit in a, in a lot of different climates here in the U.S. And here in the Mid-Atlantic is, is no exception to that. It really does produce some good fruit. It's a, a berry fit flavored fig, um, kind of a brown skin on it. and you know, you compare it to a lot of the like hardy Chicago types, and, and me personally, I feel like this variety uh, has produced better quality fruit than a lot of those um, a lot of those similar other varieties for whatever reason. And I don't I don't know why that is, but but this tends to produce a lot uh, a fruit quality that's a little bit better than a lot of similar varieties, and seems to do uh, better in the weather than a lot of other similar varieties for whatever reason. Um, so I think this is a great fig to grow. Uh, if you don't have one that has this, this sort of flavor profile, the, this, the berry flavor, uh, this is a great variety to choose. And again, I have not grown this one personally in the ground, but, um, but I think it will probably do pretty well. It's not, um, yeah, it's not the earliest variety, but uh, I, I think it's probably about mid-season, but still probably would do pretty well here. To so move on to this uh, third variety here. Um, so this one here is called Bertolino, and it looks pretty small right now, but it, uh, it should grow quite a bit this year. And Bertolino is an Italian variety. It uh, comes from a collection, of a collector, there's a collector called um, Paolo Belloni, and uh, he's an Italian gentleman. He uh, runs a conservatory called Pomona Gardens in Italy, and he has a lot of different fig, uh, fig varieties in that, uh, in that conservatory, in that collection. I think somewhere between, um, I've heard 600 or 300, you know, so somewhere in that range. But he's got a lot of really good varieties, um, a lot of different varieties. And this is one of those varieties that came from that collection. And this is a fig that I really like a lot here for this climate. I think it, it's gonna be really good here. Um, I grew it for the first time last year, again, in pots, not in ground, but I think it'll really do well here. It, um, it's an early variety. Uh, it's got a, an elongated, uh, it's green, it's got an elongated sort of shape to it and it does really well against uh, the weather and against the bugs. It has a really tight eye. Um, so the fact that it does really well against weather, has uh, really well against bugs, and then also is an early fig, you know, those are, those are huge advantages in this climate. And then the flavor is uh, kind of a berry flavor. Um, honestly, I've, I felt like it kind of had uh, almost like hints of watermelon to it. Um, so it was a good flavor. Um, not. Uh, you know, if I were to rank all the figs in terms of flavor, this would not be at the top. You know, this wasn't like a, the best flavor ever, but it, but just those other qualities, the fact that it's so good against the weather, the fact that it is an early fig, you know, I think this is a really good variety and um, hopefully we do uh, real well in the ground here. So there's one more variety uh, we have here at the church and um, we'll just take a little walk and take a look at that one. All right, so the last uh, tree that we have here is this one. It's Improved Celeste. And this is actually, of those, of those, of all of these four, this is actually the only one that I've grown in the ground myself. Um, this, uh, in fact, this was actually the first fig, fig variety that I ever got was Improved Celeste. Um, so Improved Celeste is a fig variety that comes from a uh, the fig breeding program that uh, was run by Louisiana State University in I think it was the 60s or the 70s I can't remember exactly when it was um, but what they tried to do is they tried to produce uh, new varieties of figs that would do well in the hot and humid weather that they have down in the south and they produced a lot of really good varieties um, you know pr probably my favorite is LSU Tiger um, but there's a bunch of other ones uh, Champagne uh, Hollier, or some people call it Hollier, uh, is another good one. Um, but there's a bunch of them that they produced, um, and this was one of them, L, uh, Improved Celeste. There's some different one, different varieties that are very similar that are out there that um, unfortunately are all called Improved Celeste, so it can be kind of hard to, de to determine which one's which. Um, this one, I, I, this one 
uh, came from uh, Just Fruits and Exotics. Uh, they're known to have a pretty good uh, strain of it. Um, but Improved Celeste is, again, one of the earliest fig varieties. Uh, so that's gonna be a big advantage of this, this fig. It has kind of a, a uh, just a sugar taste. Um, so it's not, you know, it's not the best tasting fig necessarily, but it's a, it's a good tasting fig and it's gonna be very productive and it's gonna grow real well. And so I think, uh, you know, and I have grown this one in, in the ground myself. So this is another variety uh, that is gonna do, do pretty well. Um, it does also pretty well against the, the weather and the bugs uh, also. So uh, this is another variety that I think will do well and, and uh, is planted here in this church. So I think hopefully they'll enjoy this, this variety here in Paris Celeste. So um, yeah, it was just a summary. So those are just some of my thoughts on how you can grow fig trees with a minimal amount of work. You know, and again, I think growing them in the ground is going to be the way to go if that's what you're trying to do. And then, um, you know, variety selection, location selection, those are gonna be real important. And then after that, you know, just make sure you give it some sort of fertilizer. I will say, you know, a lot of people swear by organic for, organic fertilizers when you're growing trees in the ground. And I actually do prefer to use organic fertilizers for in-ground trees. Um, but I think you're gonna probably have to uh, do several applications of that to get the same sort of effect. Uh, as you would with a control release fertilizer, which is going to be able to release that slowly over uh, an extended period of time. So that's why for just minimal amount of work, you'll probably use a control release fertilizer in the spring. But, um, you know, if, if you're interested in maybe getting a little more involved, um, definitely take a look at the organic fertilizers for your ground growing. Um, you know, those, those are definitely good as well. So, uh, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you got any questions, uh, please feel free to send me a, an email, pete at biglife.com, and check out my website, www.biglife.com, and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're so inclined. Thanks.